Uh, and welcome to another episode of Todd Talk, because when Todd talks, people listen, as you wish. Hopefully. And yes, I do wish that you would listen to me. Listen to me! Because today, we have a very special death battle for the mid-season finale, which will be Boba Fett versus the Predator. Or more accurately, a Predator. I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, but yes, this is the mid-season finale, so after my uh, reaction video on Monday, this will be the last little bit of Todd Talk for a while. Uh, we're apparently getting Desk of Death Battle back, so that's awesome. Always love to see Jocelyn. And uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. And I am going to let you know now, this prediction is going to be bold. It will be bold. Alright. <clears throat> Let's begin. With Boba Fett. Uh, a guy who apparently has a book. Get it? Never mind. So, uh, but yes, Boba Fett was the son of Jango Fett, who at one point in time was the most feared bounty hunter in all the world. Or sorry, all the galaxy. Remember, galaxy far, far away. But he was known on several worlds particularly, not the least of which was uh, Kamino, where he was selected by Darth Sidious and Darth Tyrannus to become the prototype of the clone army. So you know you already are good if you're, you are the base plate of a clone army. His reward, if you will, for uh, agreeing this assignment was to have a son, an unaltered clone. After, I'm pretty sure they infer that they... Uh, never mind, let's not get into it. Anyway, he, get, he has a son and his name is Boba. So after, during attack of clones on the Battle of Geonos, Geonosis, uh, Mace Windu... Um, Removes the head from his shoulders. <laughs> um, I was going to do another different head pun, but Boomstick's already done it quite a bit. So, yes. Boba died, and suddenly he had a new mission. The mission was to become a bounty hunter like his father and to kill Mace Windu. He failed, but he got close quite a bit because even at a young age, his father, Django, had trained him in the Mandalorian way of combat because... Even though they, Boba was a clone, he is indeed genetically a Mandalorian like his father before him. Which, yes, Boba has used that line in the past, like my father before me. So, yeah. Boba was trained to be an elite warrior just like his father. And so, from a young age, he worked with various bounty hunters, including Boss, Orasing, Ar 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 and, uh, and Cad Bane, he who was a mentor to him, more or less. And as time gone on, he got more and more clever. He got more and more strategic. He got more and more ruthless at times. Even killing a fellow clone youngling of his because you're not my brother. And so on and so forth. But as time went on, he did get a little bit more of an honor code. And this led to him taking all sorts of jobs dealing with things in a certain amount of ways, and becoming, like his father before him, one of the most feared bounty hunters in the galaxy. This is where things get a little complicated, <laughs> okay? Because at the end of Return of the Jedi, well, we all know what happened to, at Return of the Jedi. He went into the freaking Starlight Pit. And this is where things branch, because we know that Death Battle uses the... Uh, <clears throat> mm, sorry uses the Legends universe in modern times, okay? They used it for Yoda, they used it for Obi-Wan. So they use Legends to showcase the power of these characters and the durability of certain characters so that uh, they can get a better scaling to what they do. Because remember, in the, the extended uh, content, like the comics, the video games, the novels, and more, we get sometimes a better insight to their abilities, like how Obi-Wan can... Uh, pilot a starship at near light speed and fight um, androids who had near light speed reaction times and, and such and such. Uh, so, technically speaking, we should be able to infer that Boba's adventures from the expanded universe, you know, pre Disney buyout, should still be viable here. Because if we don't, <laughs> then the only content we have other than the movies and the Clone Wars cartoon is the comics which were are informative and i'll be referencing one thing in there for my verdict and the uh book of boba fett which as many know 
was not exactly the greatest interpretation of Boba Fett ever. Um, I did a whole review on it. It's on the outerhaven.net if you want to look it up. Uh, I gave it 3.5 out of 5. You'll understand why. Or maybe you already know. Who knows? But yeah. Um, it's tricky because Boba's adventures in the expanded universe were much different than what we have here. And the in canon stuff for Boba Fett does not go beyond the book of Boba Fett at present. We, we don't have a season two on the on the horizon as of yet. So in Disney canon, he gets out of the Sarlacc pit, though not exactly best explained how, and loses his armor, gets captured by Tusken Raiders, becomes a Tusken Raider, and after getting his armor back in the events of the Mandalorian, becomes the uh, Daujin of da D D Jarn? Jarn, sorry. No. It starts with a D. <laughs> he becomes basically the crime leader of Tatooine. The, the role that Jabba the Hutt had before him. And through various uh, adventures and trying to be a different kind of leader, one who deals with respect versus fear, which is what Jabba did, he did eventually beat back a syndicate with his allies and uh, was able to sit on the throne with honor. Whether he keeps the role is a bit ambiguous because he says, you know, I don't know if I can do this. Maybe someone else deserves the role. But we'll, we'll find out if we ever get a season two. But that is where one part of the story ends. If you go to the expanded universe, then you find out how he has killed multiple Jedi, kept their lightsabers, also a key thing to remember. Um, not in Disney canon, he has no lightsabers. In expanded universe canon, he has lightsabers. Okay, And he uses those lightsabers to, to duel with uh, Darth Vader multiple times. Um, he even was asked by Han Solo, you know, the guy who put him into the Sarlacc pit, to train his daughter because his son had gone over to the dark side and she needed even more training to be able to beat her brother. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that story would have been so much better than what we got in Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. Oh! You know it's true. You know it's true. Force, Force Awakens is acceptable, at least. Anyway. So... He also led his own Mandalorian clan. He's actually led multiple groups over the years, including a group of bounty hunters from the Clone Wars area, era and the pre-New Hope era, which is how he helped get his uh, level of appreciation, I guess, his level of credit, whatever, his status, whatever you want to say. Uh, now, to his equipment, mo now this, you have to be clear on this because... Mandalorians, technically speaking, have a wide array of weapons depending on their status, their rank, their bloodline. Uh, like, for example, Boba Fett does not have all the same weapons as Sabine Wren or, or Mando, because Mando has the Darksaber. I mean, Mo Boba has never wielded the Darksaber. Got to be clear on that. Um, so what he typically has is his jetpack with a anti-missile, oh, sorry, anti anti-air or it's an anti-vehicle missile there we go. anti-vehicle missile uh and also again jetpack so fly we oui. he has uh, a gauntlet which has a flamethrower it has a uh, grappling hook it has a uh, a, a cord that'll wrap around foes it has he has knee rockets uh, mando had a uh, uh gauntlet rockets uh what were they called like whispering birds or something like that and he has, uh, he technically still has his, uh, his weapon from the Tuscan, from the Tuscan Raiders. Uh, well, but let's just say that's, it's just a stick. It's a very good stick, but it's just a stick. Um, and again, if you count the lightsaber, that's a big thing. He has, uh, plasma. He has his carbine rifle, which is his typical standard loadout. He has uh, his gauntlet can also fire laser bolts, and overall, he's he's pretty well equipped. And of course, there's his helmet, which can see in 360 vision, has infrared, can help uh, tell him what his weapon loadout would do in certain uh, situations and all that, and more. So, Boba is easily one of the funnest characters and best characters in Star Wars when handled properly see the Book of Boba Fett. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't a bad show, but I wanted more 
focus on Boba, I didn't need two episodes on Mando. There's a series for him. It's called The Mandalorian. Uh, and then, of course, his Beskar armor, which is uh, immune to blast, most blaster fire. It's immune to lightsaber bolts or lightsaber attacks. It can uh, withstand a thermal detonation. Uh, I do apologize for the lighting. I don't, I don't want like, it keeps doing that. It can withstand a uh, thermal detonation, and it doesn't cover everything, but it covers enough. So let's put it that way. And through his reputation via the books, the movies, the comics, the show, he has proven that he is incredibly competent, tactical. His only real weakness is that sometimes he's a bit too confident and can be goaded into attacks, as seen in the Book of Boba Fett, where he was almost overwhelmed by uh, almost basic weaponry. The be the Beskar armor can deflect things. It doesn't resist everything, though. All right, It does resist things like most heat and cold and poisons. But uh, if you look at the Book of Boba Fett, he was pinned down by... Uh, overwhelming numbers in the comics he was actually knocked out by a box <laughs> kid you not look it up it was the fight with luke, for his first fight with luke skywalker i guess a blind luke skywalker a certain someone threw a box at his head and knocked him out even though he's wearing beskar armor so it doesn't pr protect him from concussive force um he was all he was also almost goaded into dying um in a duel with cad bane so there's that and the beskar armor does not cover everything if you actually look at his look at the pieces of the armor you see it's basically the helmet the chest the cod piece certain joints like the knees um his arms are fully exposed so if they wanted to you could just uh focus on the limbs and like just slowly pick them off yay so, but even with that, he has lasted an incredibly long time. He he was meant he was meant to be a throwaway character turned fan favorite character. Even George Lucas was like, I didn't expect him to be this much of a fan favorite. That's why he kind of left his fate a little ambiguous. He even said that if he knew that Bobo would be so popular, he wouldn't have done the Sarlacc pit thing. The reason it's so uneventful is because he didn't expect Boba to be such a hit. Who knew? So yeah, but if you're uh if you're gonna go up against Boba Fett. More times than not, to quote Mando, I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. Moving on to the stars. Yes, the stars. Home to potentially an infinite amount of alien races. Not alien, but alien races. And amongst these races, yes, I'm still looking through the stars. Amongst these alien races are the Yucha. It's pronounced Yaucha. Sorry, sorry, wizard. Learn to speak your, <laughs> learn to speak your alien races. Uh, it's on the wiki. Yaucha. Anyway, the Yaucha are also known as predators or hunters. Are one of the most feared beings in the entire universe that we know of. In their, in, let's be fair. In the universe that they have crafted for themselves, they are one of the most feared races because they live to hunt. To them, it's ritual it's ritualistic it's ingrained in their culture not unlike certain cultures here on earth the hunt is their way of showing not just who they are how good they are all right and while we all know the movies both the good ones and the bad ones um those movies don't always portray them as they fully are because remember in the movies they're supposed to lose they don't lose easily, but they're meant to lose. Um, in the books, in the comics, in the video games, and there's a lot of supplemental material here. Like I couldn't look up all of it, but I looked up enough to give me at least a good picture of what's going on. So, for example, in the original Predator movie with the one with Schwarzenegger and Carl Weathers and Jesse Ventura, that Predator almost wiped out an elite commando squad. And get it, commando. Uh, Elite Commando Squad, and that was a noob, as Boomstick put it, or more accurately, it was an unblooded. An unblooded is an uh, Yaucha who hasn't had a major kill. In the in the species, there are levels and tiers of Yaucha or predators, and with these predators, if you haven't had a successful hunt. 
you are unblooded. You have to go on a hunt to kill a xenomorph or other worthy, let's put it that way, worthy species in order to prove that you are a good hunter. And that's why over time, we in the, in the comics and video games and even other movies, we've seen differences in the predator line. We've seen the unblooded, we've seen the super predators, we've seen the bad bloods, we've seen the elites, we've seen glimpses of the elders, and so on and so forth. The higher you go up the ranks, the deadlier the predator you're going to get. All right, and as I'm glad they mentioned this, otherwise it's, I would have made a very specific pick if they didn't mention this. They're not taking the Predator from the movie, the first movie, the Schwarzenegger movie, because that was a noob. That is not the best representation of the species. They are taking one of the higher ranking ones, which you could interpret in one of three ways, which is they are the elites, the battle masters, or the elders. Now they say they're probably taking an elder because they've lived about hundreds of years, but even if you just say hey, we're taking an elite or a battle master, that's still a top tier uh, predator. Because if you get an elite rank or higher, you have proven definitively that you can survive multiple hunts, you have never lost a fight, you have not disgraced your species, and that you are one of the best. In fact, only once you obtain the rank of elite are you able to breed in the predator race. And not surprisingly, female Yucha only want a male Yucha, uh, Yucha who is a good fighter so that they can potentially breed a spawn that is an equally worthy fighter. See, even in, even in predators, genetics and how good you are matters. So taking that uh, approach we can note certain things for example the basic predator loadout was what you saw in the preview video today they had the bio helmet which can help them see in multiple kinds of visions including uh thermal and x-ray and night vision they have their natural vision is infrared they uh have twin blades which they use for close co combat they have the plasma caster and a few other little knickknacks but that's just again the base predator <clears throat> when you go to the higher rankings you get upgrades now i looked it up i looked them up and some of the weapons that you might have seen will not be featured in the death battle or even in the analysis um, because more than likely they'll be interpreted as they are stated as non-hunting weapons because remember this is about a ritual and rituals have rules now, some of the higher-ups can use all sorts of weapons, but there are certain specific ones that cannot be used on a hunt, mainly a plasma scythe, which I really hated because that would have really helped determine for me who would win and lose. Um, but yeah, there was a plasma scythe that could kill basically anything in four hits, and that was based off of video game logic, so imagine applying it here. Um, but there are other upgrades. For example, a basic predator has what's called a combi stick. It's a dumb name, but whatever. A combi stick is basically a large metal spear made of an unknown material. It can actually retract to be uh, concealed by the predator and then wield it to be thrown. And it's said to pierce just about anything. Um, then there's the plasma caster. Now, in the basic predator, they have a shoulder-mounted plasma caster, which can uh, fire either via the lock by the helmet or just on its own. It honestly depends on the caster. As you grow in rank, the plasma caster gets more powerful to the extent that you would can actually increase the level of power that you can shoot. In a basic caster, a basic caster bolt, it is enough to potentially kill, if not just seriously maim. At its highest features, it's enough to blow up the hull of a starship. Yeah. So that's pretty good. And that's still not the best one there is a special omni caster which can fire multiple bolts at once there's even versions that act like a rail gun which can basically vaporize enemies but with the omni caster they have one that fires dark plasma all right and this specific version will unleash an explosion based on the mass of the victim that they are shooting so if it was to hit a say a human that would be bad <laughs> And again, another version is a straight up is straight up vaporizes people. There's even certain predators that we've met that have a handheld 
uh, pistol version of the plasma caster. So even though we've seen the model that we're, that we're going to have in the fight, this still weighs into the, the analysis, okay? Because they're going to use the classic Predator version, but the other ones are going to be using the analysis, okay? So another thing that they are known for using is things like net guns, which apparently will pin you and then constrict you to the point where it can dig into your skin and cause serious harm, if not death, just by the constriction, all right? They have uh, Predator Mines. This was one that you might remember from Alien vs. Predator. Uh, and that one was one of the elites. It used the mines to completely wipe out in a xenomorph horde and vaporize them. And there are very, and just like the plasma caster, there are various kinds of mines that they can use, including ones that are triggered by uh, an enemy getting close or by remote activation or you know for various other kinds of triggering. You it can has enough mines to literally layer a sewer and ensure mm, sorry and ensure that it can kill all the xenomorphs yeah xenomorphs predators hunt them all the freaking time like that remember when i said about the unblooded one of the species that they are known to hunt and kill for for their culture is the xenomorphs and in fact they have such a hatred of xenomorphs that if that in the later movies and books and comics and such they were willing to send their best warriors to go and kill the queens and the hives all on their own not a group of hunters one for example my personal favorite wolf oh what a great name i like wolves if you can't tell um but yes wolf was a one of their best hunters period ever he was an elite which means there are technically ranks above him and he was able to not just withstand hordes of xenomorphs he killed one of their queens and then, like, if you remember the preview video, there was a, the shot of the Predator holding up the, the Xenomorph. That was Wolf. He was the only Z, uh, only Predator survived that trip to Earth. And when he went, turned to his ship with his bounty, all of the other Predators bowed to him that were there, obviously. Because they realized that this was the best among them at that time. And his feats were legendary. And again, he was an elite which means there were levels higher than him. Um, so there, and of course there is their legendary cloaking device, which makes them almost imperceptible to both the human eye and certain other gear. Um, but it's not perfect, as you all know, and to those who saw the preview. It can be, it can be short-circuited. It can be viewed, a predator can be seen even if they're not there. Or, or sorry, uh, a predator can be seen even if they're not. Uh, sorry, I just lost. I totally lost that. A predator, a predator can be seen even though they're cloaked because they have what's called a heat bubble, basically, and light refracts. You can never truly have full on invisibility unless you are able to full on refract the light around you in a way that won't be visible. That's actually why the predators love to hunt in jungle locations because the immense and dense jungles actually hide that heat bubble a lot better versus in say something like a city where you can track it if you have a good enough eye. But uh, so if you have say an infrared scanner in your helmet, you can you can see the predator through the cloak. But even then the, their armor is able to withstand various things, including their higher ups being able to withstand xenomorph blood because xenomorph blood is acidic. So, uh, and it can withstand bullets, even a, just a basic human or basic form of a predator can withstand certain kinds of bullets. Uh, they even have med kits, believe it or not. I found that incredibly fascinating. Um, but yeah, and then if all else fails, if everything goes to heck in a handbasket, they have the wrist nuke, as many fans like to call it. It's actually not a nuclear bomb, believe it or not. Uh, and their power varies from book to movie to whatever. And basically, it is the it is the ultimate weapon of last resort. Okay? It is the ultimate weapon of last resort. This is, I am going to die more times than not, and I need to both kill my prey and die with honor. So they activate the nuke, and they make sure that everything is wiped out. And sometimes they'll even use it, like an Alien vs. Predator, to wipe out all evidence of their existence so uh, existence 
on from the hunt so that others can't take their technology and use it because they have such incredible technology far beyond basic humans okay so not not star wars humans obviously but basic humans um the, the catch though is that there is a way for them to use it just as a weapon in fact wolf used a self-destruct device at the pyramid where he killed the alien queen um the, sorry, the xenomorph queen and he killed her and then got away before the bomb blew up it's powerful enough to at times wipe out 300 square blocks so it's not the easiest to get away from but if you are you're good so the predators for a reason are one of history media history's greatest hunters villains and alien species and they just look so dang good doing it mm. so who wins between Boba Fett and the Predator? Yeah, here comes the bold part. Going into this, everyone was saying it's going to be Boba Fett. Because Boba Fett has the best car armor, Boba Fett has a lightsaber more than likely, even though they haven't shown that in the preview yet. Though it's implied he's going to get it. Um, he has, uh, he can see through the cloak. That's not, that's not in dispute. I even made sure that the cloak could be seen by uh, various gadgets and it can. So, Boba Fett does have advantages. The problem is the rank. If this was a basic predator, an unblooded or just like one hunt to its name, I would give this fight to, to Boba Fett easy. But this isn't, because remember, because they've lost to humans a lot. Uh, but this isn't the case. This is a full-on... I've killed a lot of things, Predator. This is an elite, a battle master, an elder. The elders can live for hundreds of years, and they only live if they kill. If they fail a hunt, they must die. With the exception of elites and battle masters. Uh, I believe that's actually specifically the battle masters. The battle masters can undergo a punishment and then have a chance at redemption. But that's how high ranking they are and how proven they are that they are able to get that chance of redemption. If an unblooded or a lower ranking predator loses a hunt or fails on a hunt, they die, like straight up. So we're talking about the elite battle masters, elders, and they're the ones who have so much experience. And you could say, but they've never faced anything like Boba Fett. That's not exactly true. They, one of them, uh, who's uh, Ahab, they have they have the great they have great names mr black is one of them no relation to yours truly um one of them went up against the engineers uh ahab was a predator who was obsessed with the engineers which who are basically the creators of life like humans uh i want to so where you say that life comma like humans all right and engineers were able to take down a an elite hunter with ease uh, actually, it was Ahab that they fought, and one of them broke its arm and leg. Ahab was able to kill them with some help from a human, but it was still a kill, and they were able to go up against the engineers for some time. They have much better strength, speed, and, and endurance and all that. And the only reason that the human was able to do something was because they had an engineer weapon. So, yeah. But the Predators have faced so many things over so many hundreds of years, and... The best of them have the best armor, the best weapons, and a larger variety of weapons than what Boba Fett has. Could Boba kill the Predator? Absolutely. But the question is, who kills him more times than not? The Predator is a specialist in hunting. So is Boba Fett. One, they both can see each other. That's not in question. So Boba Fett would be able to, say, get the jump on him. But because he's never faced a Predator before, he doesn't know exactly what he's fighting either. The predator will be able to see through its various visions that it ha that Boba has key weaknesses that aren't protected by the Beskar. And I think they'll be able to exploit that, especially with the Plasma Glaive, the, the various versions of the Plasma Caster, and the mines. The, if the mines are ironically one of my biggest things because the, it has enough to line a sewer. So he clearly has enough to line a battlefield and trip up Boba Fett. Add that to the net gun, which can... Uh, immobilize Boba Fett long enough for the Predator to get a kill potentially it definitely can take out the jetpack and if all else fails he has a nuke <laughs> it could set the nuke on a timer and make sure that it gets away before Boba Fett is literally obliterated 
Um, Boba does have disintegration weapons, but so does the Predator. Uh, the Predator actually is a better long-range fighter because even though Boba's uh, 360 vision has and his helmet has magnification, so does the Predator. And so his Plasma Caster is much more of a long-range weapon versus Boba's who's just got a basic blaster, which isn't the most accurate thing ever. Um, so as ironic as it sounds, because they're using the top tier of the Predator race, I'm going to have to go with the pre with a Predator winning this one. It is a bold move. I know that everyone's saying that Boba's going to win. I'm not so sure now. I have bit my tongue before when I thought that Zatanna could win against Scarlet Witch because everyone was saying Scarlet Witch. I am taking my shot. <laughs> I need to have faith in myself again, and I think that with them using the higher tiers of the Predator, they are going to use or they will allow the best weapons, the best armor, which the higher ranks do get, and with their experience, they'll be able to take down Boba Fett. It won't be easy, but I think they're going to do it. So, I am picking the Yaucha, the Predator, the Hunter, to beat Boba Fett. Oh, yeah. And with that, we are ending this episode of Talk Talk. Who do you think is going to win between the Predator and Boba Fett? Let me know in the comments below. So, I thank you for watching. It means for I know you're listening. And I'll see you around.